I'm a millionaire three times over between the ages of 23, 24. Um, but I can't keep a needle out of my arm. I said, I wish God would either cure him or kill him or kill me because I can't take any more. The age of seven, my uh, sister got me a skateboard. And that night when my mother put me to bed, she said, Brandon, what do you want to do with the skateboard? I said, Brandon, give me that skateboard. He said, no, if something happens to me. I wanted to go to heaven with me tonight. It was like God had came down and handed me the Holy Grail in the form of a skateboard. The moment that skateboard touched my hand, I knew I was going to be a professional skateboarder. I, I ate it, I breathed it, I slept it, I jumped it. He was very good at it. From a little tiny boy up, he loved skateboarding. What really made me happy is that it made my mother happy. You know, and that's what, like, I loved, because I'm the biggest mama's boy through and through, then and now. It, he really is a mama's boy. He was always, he would always be happy when I was happy or smiling. He was really a good little kid. I was an eight-year-old kid running around with these 19, 20, 23-year-old guys, skating just like them, and uh, I couldn't get enough of it. You know, at 14, I'm endorsed by Gatorade, and then at 15, I'm designing my pro model for Pal Peralta. I'm, I'm touring the world with Tony Hawk. I have a private tutor that comes with me. He was really at the top of his game. And then one night, a man knocked at the door. He said, I'm here for my son's skateboard. I said, what? Brandon said, you're not, he's not getting it. He owes me money for drugs. I said, what? It sort of just turned into a downward spiral. But I never, ever gave up hope. I never gave up hope at all. And Tony Hawk, my mentor, calls me and he says, we have one of two things we could do with you. We could put you in a treatment, you could save your life, you can continue to be a professional skateboarder, or, or you can quit the team. And I didn't have a breath of fresh air in my lungs when I said I quit. When I really got into it and kind of gave up my goals, my dreams, my aspirations of, of skateboarding. I'm Brandon Novak, and this is Doo Doo Falls. So I trip and I fall into those movies, Jackass, and, and these TV shows, Viva La Bam. And now I'm a millionaire three times over between the ages of 23, 24. Um, but I can't keep a needle out of my arm. I think I did maybe seven rehabs for him. And, and those private rehabs are very expensive. My mother has sold three, phone, three homes to financially pay for me to go to two treatment centers. Like, how am I here? I never put my hand up in fifth grade and said, you know what, teacher, when I grow up, I want to be a homeless heroin addict who, who makes his mother buy him a plot. And I kept thinking, this has to be my fault. This has to be my fault. I blame myself. She, she has nothing left to give to help me. She simply went to God with one prayer. Father Mike saw her sitting in the pew at the church across the street from her house in Baltimore one day, and she was crying hysterically, uncontrollably. And Father Mike said, Miss Pat, what's wrong? Miss Pat, my mother says, Father Mike, it's Brandon. He's never been worse. There's nothing left I can do for him. I said, I wish God would either cure him or kill him or kill me because I can't take any more. He said, God has plans for him, for him, and you don't know what those plans are. So don't ever say it again. And Father Mike was right. So 4 a.m. the next morning, my phone rang, and it was the police. And the police said they found him passed out. And they said, can we bring him to your house? And I said, yes. And he slept on the floor. Then I called, made some calls to some people. Somehow or another, we got hooked up with a friend up in uh, Philly. And that friend got him into the rehab up there. And that's, that's the rehab where it's just been wonderful. And I successfully complete that 90-day treatment center. And in that 90-day treatment center, what I had learned is that my mentality will create the reality for which I live in. And they taught me if you change your perception, you can change your world. I could see he was getting better and better and better, and, and, and he just kept getting better. And he was going to all those meetings, and I'd go up there every chance I got to be around him. May 25th, 2015 was the last day I had a drink or a shot of heroin. I now work in the drug and alcohol treatment field. God saw the light, or somebody saw the light. Out of a sadness, a light shined. Every time someone calls me, it usually goes like this, Novak, if you can get clean, there's no reason why I can't. Can you help me? He's wonderful about that. People call him, and I hear what he tells those people, and, and how nice he is to those people. He, he'll listen for he, forever. Oh, I'm so very proud of him now.
my mother, the very same mother that, that went to God and said, please cure him, kill him, or kill me. The very same mother that, that depleted several savings accounts, sold three homes to financially pay for me to go to two treatment centers, called me a year into my process, and she said, Brandon, I hate when you come to visit. I said, why? She said, I get so sad when you leave. As long as Brandon is breathing, I'm there for him because he's my brat and I love him.